Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is sap chat time. For those of you who have never stumbled upon one of my videos before, this is honestly probably not the place to start. This is sap chat. It's a place for um, the community to get together every Saturday morning and just chit chat, share about the week, chat with each other in the comments below. You are more than welcome to stay, but if you're looking for an art tutorial, Go look at my last video. I, I showed how to patch a hole in a stretched canvas. Uh, or the one before that where we painted watercolor sunflowers. Or the one before that where we used some charcoal. Uh, we reviewed the Derwent XL charcoal block. So lots and lots of fun stuff. I think, And we did a magnolia collage uh, and painting the time before that. So if you're looking for an art tutorial, I got lots of them on my channel, but this is Sat Chat. And it's a fun, happy place for us all to hang out together every weekend. Um, so with that, <laughs> with that disclaimer out of the way, how are you doing? Well, it's been pretty good here. Um, it's uh, the got a house full. We got a house full again. So um, as I mentioned before, my my eldest moved back home, and uh, but he's been on vacation for the last couple of weeks. So like I left for New York, and then he left while I was in New York for um, for the Caribbean, and then. Um, he was gone for two weeks and uh, so yeah everybody's back now he's he's on the job hunt um, the girls have finished their play we got to see the play last weekend I was talking about going to that um, oh my word <laughs> it was a great play it was Legally Blonde the musical it was so funny these kids were so good I mean they really like you know when you're doing anything like comedic you really have to you really have to lean into it you really have to sell it you can't be kind of timid and these kids just leaned in and did a great job it was so funny so I'm not used to so we didn't have mask mandates which was really nice I could see people's smiles I could give hugs miraculously I do not have COVID a week later so I'm just really happy about that but it was just oh so, so nice to see people's faces again um, so I hadn't worn lipstick out and about for like you know two years so I was like really excited that I could wear my favorite shade of lipstick and we were going out to, to dinner. Uh, Jason and I were meeting my sister and her husband and kid. And um, so I'm like, well, I know my lipstick's not going to last. So I stuck it in my shirt pocket. <sighs> you know where this is going, don't you guys? Yeah. So the next day, <laughs> my husband says, what happened to the laundry? <laughs> Because it didn't, like, I threw my shirt in the dirty clothes, didn't even occur to me to check my pockets. And, uh, yeah, major lipstick, tube of destruction, explosion. It, ironically, it barely left a, a touch of red on my shirt that it was actually in. But he had a brand new shirt that he wore to the play, completely toast. I mean, we actually, we got most of the stains off because um, we, like, sprayed it. We caught it before it was fully dried in the dryer because uh, that's where the, the lipstick melted. It didn't melt in the washer. It melted in the dryer. So uh, Jason was checking on it because he had a, a stain from dinner on his shirt and he was seeing if it came out and it was just it would look like a massacre towels are towel <laughs> like you know when your kids like move out and then you buy the nice towels right okay so when we when we put the addition in we put our we have our master bedroom out there so we have a new bathroom and we we bought towels to go in it so if we're gonna have nice towels so those kids aren't gonna mess them up <laughs> oh man every towel like every new towel just got it's totally covered in lipstick uh and it wasn't even like a full tube of lipstick but it was red and it covered everything and I was really bummed too because it was my favorite shade of lipstick and I uh and now it is no more I think I found it at the Dollar Tree so it was probably like you know out of date it was probably discontinued when I got it but uh but anyway so we used the uh that Dollar Tree that yellow spray awesome stuff that actually did really good and it did take most of the stains out of everything and it was like it was a, it looked like a bloodbath it was bad um so i do recommend that product use the full strength when you know you have a lipstick mishap like that and i think honestly well i guess it wouldn't have melted if it didn't go through the dryer but I'm like if we caught it before it went in the dryer probably we could have gotten 100 percent of the stains out but anyways so uh, that's my public service announcement as you emerge into the world and you wear lipstick again because you don't have to wear a mask check your pockets friends check those pockets so you don't ruin your towels that you buy after your kids move out because you can have nice things again because apparently you can't have nice things but I'm gonna be, you can't have nice things <laughs> even at 45 years old I can't I uh, can't manage to clean up my pockets before I throw stuff in the, in the dirty clothes but that was uh that was uh something that happened this week I really it's actually been a very productive week I have been like in the zone now I'm knocking on wood or whatever the heck they make those cubes out of because uh, hopefully my productivity doesn't crash, but, um, I have it. If you, oh, if you look behind me, you can see a little sneak peek over the, um, 
of the class that I'm working on. I'm working on a watercolor crayon class. See, I've been I haven't done a standalone class um, in the last year and a half. Well, my last uh, standalone class was watercolor glass class, and um, and that was a great class. And it was because I was really passionate about painting glass and watercolor. I love like rendering clear subjects like that, transparent subjects. And um, I was excited about it, so it was a really good class, but I was having, a, I was really struggling with what to do next. And I had two classes started. I had one that was an oil painting class, and I had one that was, um, well, you know, the and the other one that I was working on was either going to be, oh my goodness, my nose is running, I don't know why. It was either going to be, uh, it was going to be either bouquets, seasonal bouquets, and I had a couple fall bouquets, or it was going to be all fall subjects. Like it was going to be some fall bouquets and some fall landscapes and things like that. So, and I just couldn't decide. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. And um, so I it was just kind of, it was kind of like a roadblock. Every time I kept thinking, I'm going to get the oil class finished up this month. I'm going to get that oil class finished up. I just didn't have the will, I guess. I just, I was just like, having a, a roadblock and and then I was like you know the last time I painted oils was like months ago so it's like first of all I'm gonna have to you know immerse myself in it again to get to knock the rust off and then put the, the rest of the class together and I was just like I'm just not feeling it but what I've been really excited about and every time I touch the supply it just sparks joy and those are my watercolor crayons and it's like well, why don't I do my do a class on this? I kind of felt like, well, I started those two things. I need to finish those two things. But feeling like I need to finish those two things before I did anything else or before I made any other classes has kept me from making any other classes. I'm like, that's ridiculous. I mean, Critique Club has two new lessons that go in every month. And, you know, I did release the standalone archives. But as far as, like, a new standalone class, I hadn't done anything. So um, I pre-recorded a bunch of stuff. I'd been working on a bunch of different projects and reviews and things like that so I could have them in the can and just kind of uh, schedule them out. And so I got myself a couple weeks of stuff already pre-recorded and I got to work on that class. And um, I had a super productive week this week. I got eight lessons recorded. Uh, we're gonna have eight different projects plus um, just like a basic surprise overview. And uh, I think everything builds on everything else. And by the time students get done with that class, they're going to be able to like pick any subject in watercolor crayons and know how to tackle it. So I'm so excited about that. Everything I've started to edit. Everything's recorded for the class and I'm hoping to launch the 1st of April, April 1st. I think that's actually next Friday. So so stay tuned. Stay tuned to see if it's ready. Will it be ready next week? <laughs> it's like a soap opera. Tune in next week to find out, to see the gripping conclusion. But uh, but I'll probably do a live stream too. That'll probably be the, uh, the week after and I already have in mind what I want to do for the live stream. Um, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. So so look forward to that if you've been, uh, if you are a fan of watercolor crayon or you've wanted to, you have someone you want to get the most out of them or you're curious about them because I've been getting also like not only have I been excited to use watercolor crayons, every time I use them I get a lot of positive uh, feedback and a lot of people asking questions and a lot of people interested in them so I think, and there's not a lot of like, um, there's not a lot of tutorials out on watercolor crayons. It's kind of like, I think it's a supply a lot of people have and a lot of people like, but nobody really uses them for full artworks on their own. They kind of use them to mix media to add a little, a little something, something here or there, but they don't use it for a full project. I mean, some people do clearly, but like in general, anyways, what I'm seeing on YouTube, um, so I think that'll be kind of exciting for people that have these supplies to be able to like, oh, I can do that with it, and I can do this, and I can do that. So I was excited, and I'm like, I'm excited about this. This is what I need to be focusing on. So, um, so yeah, that's what I've been working on all week, and um, it's been it's been going really, really well. Uh, oh, I, I made a list because I'm like, I don't really have when you got your nose to the grindstone, when you get your head down, and you're focusing on something. It's like you don't really have time to do much other stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I've done some some chores, some errands, but that's nothing too exciting. Um, I am, I do want to let you know that the, and I did kind of mention it at the beginning of the video, but the Patching a Canvas video is up. I posted it yesterday and it turned out really well. Um, I'm really pleased. I honestly, I'm, I'm actually looking over the other side of the room where my canvas is. Uh, I couldn't even see where I patched it. I had to like look to the back of the canvas to see where the patch was on the back to know where I, where I, um, where the flaw was in the front so that worked out really well and hopefully it will save a few canvases sometimes like sometimes you buy them and um and you drop something on them or you buy one that's damaged in a pack and you don't realize it or you buy one at a great deal because there is a damaged one in the pack at least this way you'll know how to fix it 
I mean, that's a small canvas. I mean, they're so they're so cheap nowadays. Canvases have gotten really cheap. They used to be really expensive, and it used to be a big savings to just buy your own canvas and buy your own stretcher bars and, and make your own. And I think it is still if you're doing a large canvas or if you're doing a weird size. But if you are just getting a standard size canvas, it's they're so cheap right now. Of course, the cheap canvases are not as good quality as, like, the Fre Fredericks, which are still, like, more expensive. But for, like, you know basic everyday stuff or if you're doing sip and paints and things like that it's a it's a, it's a savings the canvas i used to like i think it was by creative mark uh was called the edge and you could get it in a really thick depth and the canvas was, was also like a heavier weight canvas than what you get like in the bargain canvases um like at a craft store or whatever i think they started marketing those a lot because the paint parties were so popular and for a paint party canvas i mean you're going to spend like an hour on it you're not going to spend you know weeks and weeks on it or even several hours on it so you know it just makes more sense to go with a more economical canvas so you don't have to charge you know more for your classes um so, I mean, on one hand, that's nice, but on the other hand, those are way more prone to damage, to, like, ripping and stuff, because it's a thinner material. But um, I'm excited to paint on the canvas now, it's a, and I, and I re-gessoed the entire thing, so after I patched it, I just applied the gesso all over it, because I wanted it to have a nice uniform sheen. And I think the gesso, or air quotes gesso, they put on canvases, the budget ones, are really shiny. You know, it's like, it's not, well, I'm not going to say really shiny, but it's definitely not as toothy as what you would, what you would get from like a, like if you bought a jar of gesso and you just with a canvas. So I don't know if they're just using like latex, white latex paint or what on those things, but it does seem like it's not quite as, um, as nice of a surface. I have an idea for what I want to do on the canvas, but then I had another idea, so I don't know, I've got conflicting ideas in my head, but we'll see. We'll see when I get to it. I don't know if I'll film it because it's a three foot by four foot canvas, so it's really big. I might do snippets or I might just kind of like rig up um, my old camcorder and set it on time lapse. Oh, something fun. My son bought, when he was on vacation, he bought a GoPro and he put it in his car and he was like just driving around and it was so smooth and crisp and I was like, I bet I could, he said, he said there's something that he has, you can wear it like on your chest. And I was like, I bet I could go kayaking with that and I could do plein air painting because I haven't wanted to film plein air painting because it's just kind of an ordeal. It's like, I don't want to set up because then, you know, you're trying to enjoy the experience of being outside in the air and in what you're painting. If you have to keep moving a tripod around or you have to worry about if your camera's going to get damaged or anything like that, it kind of takes the fun away. And I certainly aren't going to, I'm not going to bring my good camera on my kayak, in my kayak because it's not waterproof. And he said his camera is like um, waterproof up to like, 300 feet or something I can't remember but it's waterproof so if it got splashed or whatever it wouldn't be uh it wouldn't be damaged so I thought that was really cool so I thought I might borrow that maybe on one of my kayaking excursions and see how it goes it still might be might be choppy but I guess there's like a image stabilizer on there that you can use so it's not all shaky um and I know like my camera would be very shaky if I was trying to do something like that so I don't even know how I would I don't even know how I would like use my phone I have a like a it's almost like a baggy thing. It's like you wear it on your neck and you can put your phone in it and like money or whatever and it seals it up. But um, yeah, I mean, it hangs like the law, like the portrait way, not the horizontal way. So I don't even think that would work. And I think it would be extremely just jostly and it would be hard to control and start and stop it and all that. But this actually sounds like it might be something worth uh, looking into anyway. I don't know. Uh, if, if I could do, if I could film plein air painting where it didn't, uh, interfere with the act of plein air painting, like the enjoyment of it, then that would be kind of neat. I really enjoy James Gurney's videos and he does a lot of uh, gouache painting in the wild and uh, he gets, he like talks to the people that he meets. He talks to the people he meets as he's walking down the street. It's neat. He just like talks to these people and he like asks them about what they're doing and he just did one of a biplane and he was showing like a sight size or grid and I found it very interesting. Um, his work is just, is really, uh, really amazing anyway. And, um, I don't know, that'd be kind of fun. And speaking of plain air painting, I watched a video, and actually I didn't even watch the video, I watched like a few seconds of it, or a few minutes of it, because, um, I was just kind of catching it while I was having my coffee in the morning, but I plan on returning to it, but the thing was, it sparked this idea that, um, I want to try gouache plein air painting, and I did it before, I, I tried it once, but it was, it was cold out, it was like at the beginning of the pandemic, and I brought, like, the big uh, jelly gouache, like the set of 18, like, jelly gouache palettes,
foot and that's pretty heavy to lug around and I was hiking over in the Audubon um, sanctuary and uh, so I, I did a I did a little sketch in my sketchbook it was awful and I was cold and I was miserable and plus painting didn't come out good you know even if, if you're out there and you're enjoying the day it doesn't matter if your painting doesn't come out good but if you're out there and you're cold and miserable and the painting's not coming out good then it's just like ah. I haven't done it since with the gouache paint, but I was thinking if I could scoop out some of the colors from the, the jelly gouache palette, because I don't want to bring tubes, and put it into some sort of palette that I wouldn't have to worry about it leaking, then that would be, um, that would be really, that would be really fun. And then something, it never occurred to me, it never occurred to me to try using a water brush with my gouache paints. And I was watching uh, John Muir Laws, who does a lot of nature journaling and um, like bird paintings and stuff. He does these workshops. I don't know if he live streams them on YouTube or if he live streams them elsewhere and then uploads them to YouTube. But anyway, he had one this week or I, mm, yeah, was it this, this week or last week? And he was doing and he was just kind of doing some demonstrations on how he would do plein air with gouache. And he had this little palette and it looked like a uh, looked like the Cotman sketcher box at the old 12 Cotman sketcher box. And he had put the liquid gouache paint in, and as it was drying, he said he pushed down on it with his finger to kind of uh, like uh, compress it so that, you know how gouache paint tends to crack and wants to kind of fall out of your palette? And actually, so does cheap watercolors. So if you've got cheap watercolors, this might be a good tip for you. But as it starts to dry, he would press down on it with his finger and like just kind of smush, compress the paint. So we'd end up with these kind of like hard pans of gouache, kind of like when you buy a, like a dry gouache palette, like, you know, um, like Karen Dosh or um, let's see who else who else sells dry gouache palettes or even like the like the Derwent um, like the Derwent pastels are kind of like a gouache so uh, I thought that was a really nice idea but if I wanted to keep the paint wet could I find something small with um, that was airtight that also had a palette on it and I've been looking at a few different palettes to try and I've been looking around what I have which I really don't have much it's airtight because when I do watercolor I like my paint to dry out completely and then I re-wet it with a brush because I don't want to get mold and stuff by the way I know people say don't apologize but the, uh, the water pump is going and the furnace. The kids are all home. Uh, softball practice. I guess the girls went to a blood drive. They donated blood today, so they didn't do softball practice. So everyone was home a little earlier than I expected. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a madhouse. A madhouse! <laughs> you dirty ape, get your hands off of me. Oh, Planet of the Apes. <laughs> have you seen it? <laughs> or do you have no idea what I'm talking about? Um, Charlton Heston. I don't know the other. Roddy McDowell. Or... The newer versions, which don't have those comical lines. I don't know, Charlton Heston, man. <laughs> so serious. <laughs> it's a madhouse. A madhouse. Where was I? Oh, gouache. And so, uh, so because I don't uh, like to keep my, I don't like airtight palettes for the studio because I want air to get in there and dry stuff out so I don't have like any mold or condensation or any weirdness. I, my studios are in the basement. Um, so I was kind of looking for something like that. I saw one that I looked really good, and actually I'd seen um, Becca Hilburn review one, and I, I kind of had my eye out for it since she had it. She ordered it from AliExpress, but I was kind of waiting for it to come to Amazon, and um, and it did. And what it is, it's like a 16, it's like a little, um, almost looks like a little jewelry box. It's like clear, like acrylic probably, a plexi plexiglass something, and it's a, a square, it's about four by four, and it's got 16 compartments, and they're sealed, so they're leak proof. And then there's like this um, silicone membrane that goes over it, and then the lid closes down and clamps on, and it has this collapsible cup that, um, that it sits on, so you plop it all together, so it's like this uh, four inch by four inch by probably two inch compact box. There's even like a lanyard to hang around your neck if you want to. And I was thinking if I had that, I wouldn't actually wouldn't even need the water the water bucket if I was going to use water brushes, but you know, it's nice to have. Um, so I thought that might be a nice idea because the lid actually opens up and stays attached to the palette, it could be used for mixing. There was another one I saw that had 24 compartments, but it was bigger. It was probably like, um, it was probably like five by nine or so. And I mean, the plus would be if you had one of those 24 count jelly gouache palettes, you could make yourself a mini palette to take around, but the lid comes completely off. It like it like clamps down, it has like uh, two buckles on like every side, so it's serious, it's leak proof. And I guess if one of the buckles went, you'd have plenty of buckles to, to back you up. But um, with the fact that the, the lid comes off, I'm like, then I'm gonna need another mixing area. It's just, that wouldn't work for me so well, so I decided, I decided the smaller one would probably work better. 
and I actually saw another palette that looked really interesting and it was from Jerry Q and it had um, it had a place for 16 half pans but it looked like it was molded so you could actually put the paint in if you didn't want to put half pans and then it had um, it had a uh, like a pal a lid that I'll, I'll link these down so you can see what I'm talking about it had a uh, a lid that closed down over that and I thought I might be able to put like a like some self adhesive foam foam or something or just maybe even just a sheet of foam foam or silicone or something there to like wedge in because then it slid into like a like a like a case and then there was this other mixing area that that swiveled out so it, I, I think probably superior makes it it looks like one of those funky novelty fan palette things um, but I thought that would be interesting and something else that I think I'm pretty sure I I, I saw this on John. Mirror Law's video was that he was talking about using watercolor for your darks and using gouache for your lights. Like he's like, I only buy the light colors of gouache and then I use watercolor when I want my darks. I'm like, that makes sense because um, then you have kind of everything. You, I, I think you would have less shift because like water because the darks would be more transparent, so they'd retain their darkness, and then you'd have the uh, the lighter colors being more opaque. So I'm like, what if I did like a hybrid and I did and with 16 colors, with 16 colors I could do, you know, I could do nine, or I could do like eight watercolors and eight gouaches, and that would be more than enough. So I thought that's kind of a neat idea too. Um, so I'm, I'm planning on trying those two palettes. They were very inexpensive. I think the the funky one with the 16 with all the things that folded and slid around that was like ten dollars. And the one that had the water cup and the sealing, um, the silicone seal and the lanyard and everything that was like fifteen dollars. So they're both are pretty affordable. And I thought that um, that one of those is bound to work really well for for gouache. And um, I'm going to try them out and see how they go. And that way, um, at least it'll be kind of informative for others so they won't have to buy two palettes. I could buy one palette or at least they'll know what's out there. I'm sure that bigger one would be uh, would be good for people that maybe like to carry an easel around or want to set up for a longer period of time. I'm generally like... Um, and the, I'm the type of person that I'm a light packer no matter what. The more I bring, the less I use. So like if I'm going to a, like a scrapbooking crop, I will bring like one bag or maybe one rolly thing because if I bring more than that, then I will get less done. It's like it's like the perfect amount. I need just enough um, because then I'll get cured. Then I'll get creative if I don't have exactly what I want or borrow it from somebody else or whatnot. And if I'm plein air painting, I get way more done if I have less because I don't want to have to make decisions, more decisions than I have to. Because when you're out there and you can be overwhelmed by all everything you're seeing. So if you're also overwhelmed by the, all the choices you have in your palette, then that's no good. So having a limited palette works well for me. That little micro portable painter that I can stick in my pocket with a couple water brushes and a sketchbook or my favorite thing to plain air paint with is the original portable painter because I like to use brushes rather than water brushes. But I'm really, really intrigued about using water brushes with gouache because it never I've never done that, it never occurred to me, and I think that actually might work pretty well. I think it would work pretty well, especially if you did let your gouache dry out, because that's what I would be worried about is that, you know, water brushes can tend to feed water or you can tend to get more water than you want, and if you're working with a wet paint, that might be problematic. But if you let it dry down, then that might be just the thing. So, and I think that palette that has the 16 walls that I can swivel closed would work. And if it fits regular half pans and I don't have to squeeze, I can just try it out. I can take some half pans and put them in there um, that I already have with the have the, of watercolors and I can just fill a few with gouache and see how it goes. You know, not put too much, put enough for like a painting or two and just kind of, I don't know, kayak out to, you know, the island or something and just do a little painting or go hike the trails and do a little do a quick little painting just to kind of see how it how it works with the way I paint um so I thought and maybe I'll bring a, gro a GoPro who knows maybe I'll get all fancy <laughs> I wouldn't uh <laughs> probably not likely not likely like my new shirt my new shirt that uh my uh <laughs> Lila was was uh, going through a closet and getting rid of stuff and so before the kids when the kids have a goodwill bag I always go through the goodwill, goodwill bag so I'm like I hate shopping what do you got <laughs> I'm probably gonna get covered with paint or who knows exploded with lipstick. So let's not get fancy here I can't have nice things. <laughs> I have a few nice things. I have like like uh, it was funny like everything I brought to New York It was all like it was all uh, Like actual grown-up people work clothes. So it's like yeah, no paint stains on those um, And like yeah, I'll fit in a backpack. Everything was just gray I had like five shirts. They were either gray or black or black and white pattern and a pair of black pants and a pair of gray pants And I was good to go <laughs> It's like seriously all the clothes I have that don't have paint on them, but um, I need to be warm and I need to not worry about my clothes getting covered so 
you know. Luckily, what I wore to the play wasn't all that fancy, so I didn't really ruin it. It was like a flannel shirt that I think I actually pulled out of the Goodwill bag that my kids were getting rid of, because I don't think it was my flannel shirt originally. It was just like a black and white. Uh, we're casual in Maine, friends. We're real casual up here. <laughs> We don't put on airs. We don't put on airs. We went to, actually speaking of not putting on airs, we went to uh, to Dysart's for dinner. And if you've never been there in uh, in Herman, it's this big truck stop. And I have very fond memories of this place because it was the only 24-hour restaurant when I was in college. And I went to college in Bangor. And so, I mean, they probably closed, they're not 24 hours anymore. They stopped that like probably six months or so before the pandemic, they stopped being open 24 hours. And I was like, how can you do that? That is like an institution. Probably because they were sick of us college kids showing up in the middle of the night. I, that's probably it. And probably like, you know, a college kids, a group of like 20 college kids that are like all ordering coffee and a plate of fries to share or something. They probably weren't making any money on the overnight. But uh, man, so many fond memories of going there in the middle of the night. But anyway, um, it was my sister's idea to meet there because it was kind of like, in between, they're driving up, and uh, so that would probably have been about 45 minutes from their place, and um, so we could kind of meet them there and I'll head over to the school for the play. But, um, but man, we got there, and we got there early, and we waited like 45 minutes or something for, maybe it might have been closer to an hour, I think we might have waited like an hour for our food. Luckily, we pre-bought tickets and stuff, and we were all set, but um, like there was like, there must have been music festivals in town because there were like buses, like charter buses out there, and then um, and then I thought, because I knew there was a junior high musical music festival, so I'm like, I bet there's high school musical fest music festivals too, so yeah, sure enough, like, uh, <laughs> in walks about 50 people with, like, a, a high school, uh, like, marching band, varsity jacket type thing. So I'm like, oh boy, man, I'm glad we didn't show up after them. We were, I think we, we showed up after one bus, but before the other bus. It was, it was pretty, pretty crazy, but we made it there on time, and we all had a good, a good, uh, good visit, and, um, yeah, yeah, it was good. So, I think I've caught you up on pretty much everything. I'm, I'm kind of excited. It's watercolor season, um, so I've got a few new things in to review, new products. I'm excited to share those with you. I'm excited to try them out because it's fun. I enjoy I enjoy trying new products, I've got to say. It's it's one of the perks. And um, uh, and I do. I'm curious. I like, to see, uh, I like to see if things are good or not or if it's the same stuff that we've been seeing just from another company. But... Um, it's funny because like in the fall and winter it's markers it seems like all the companies are going to are releasing new marker sets in the fall and then like in the spring all the companies are, are releasing um are releasing, releasing watercolor sets uh and then like see the winter is like colored pencil sets gouache can fall in between like well gouache probably comes out gouache season's probably spring like late winter early spring and then like spring summer you get all the watercolor companies or all the companies releasing new watercolor sets it's funny it's very cyclical uh how the companies do it. It's almost like they've got it on their calendars, or maybe they just copy what the other companies are doing. I have no idea. I don't know how that end of it goes, but uh, but anyways, it's kind of fun to see what's new. Anyway, just, you know, to be curious. But that's about it. I've got to head to the post office, and uh, I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me, and let me know what you've been up to in the comments below, and we'll continue the conversation there. Till next time, happy crafting, and bye!